Thank you. When I was getting this put on, I didn't know if I was getting a brain chip implanted. I don't know if you had any of these on. She had tape. She was sticking it to the side of my head. Uh, this has been awesome so far. I'm the part of the program where I bring everybody down and explain why none of us are going to have jobs next year. No, when, uh, when Guy and team came in um, a few months back and asked me to, to think about this topic, I thought it was super interesting and very provocative. Um, I think big change comes from thinking about big thoughts, um, no matter how far they stretch. And like I said, at the time, it was really interesting, very thought-provoking. Uh, the last few days, as I thought about standing in front of a group of customer success professionals and telling them why we all don't have jobs, uh, probably wasn't the smartest decision I've ever made. But that said, um, I'm not here to talk about that, actually, at all. Um, Customer success has an incredible, incredible future. I think the challenge we all have is that the, the definition of what customer success is is still early. Um, you can talk to 10 different CEOs, and you will get 10 different answers on what they think customer success is. And that provides opportunity for all of us. And what I wanted to do is provide a perspective. It, 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 it definitely overlaps with some of the things that were said earlier, but I wanted to, to provide a perspective of thinking about how to create the high-impact, the high-impact customer success organization in the future. So to start with, you've heard this before, customer success is a mindset. It is a mindset. It is absolutely not. It is absolutely not an organization. I'm utterly convinced that there is no way for any single group within a company to be the ones who are the voice of the customer, the customer advocate, and making sure that we're making progress with the customers the way we need to. There is no way that that can happen. So part of what I think a CS leader or CS team needs to do is make sure that the customer lens, the customer lens, is focused on every single part of the organization. And I think that at scale, this becomes more difficult. When a company is smaller early on, I think the entire organization rallies around the handful of first customers. Uh, everybody does what it takes to make those folks successful. But once we start getting into scale, I think what you'll find will happen is, is that other parts of the organization start to define metrics. It's no longer about, we've got to make these 15 customers succeed. They have to renew with us. What they start thinking about is, wow, we should be thinking about other metrics. We should be thinking about uh, how many products did we deliver this year? Or how many lines of code did we deliver this year? This says nothing, absolutely nothing about the customer. And I think it's important that we, we ensure that we have um, this customer lens focused on every part of the company. So for example, for product management, um, one of their metrics could be how many raving fans do they have of their specific product? Right? That's a reasonable metric for them to have. If they're the ones who are conceptualizing what products are going to be brought to market, why shouldn't they have a metric that says, how many, how many of our customers are standing up and saying, this is the best product I've ever used? Right? Very customer-focused metric that will keep them focused that way. In engineering, it could be how many P1s or P0s, whatever world you live in, where you have the, you know, the production down um, scenario. Um, for engineering, how many of those are customer raised? Like they found it before we found it. Right? That's another one that you can think about. So I think there's a whole list of things if you think through the customer lens that you can keep the other parts of the organization focused. The other thing that you'll find happening is that the, this again at scale you find a lot of uh, in the interest of optimizing all the we need to create a process for that. How many times will you hear that as you're scaling? Oh my gosh, we need to find a process. We need to define it for that. And in, and in the energy to create a process to create more efficiency, what I would argue is you're frequently causing less efficiency, much less efficiency. Um, we're dealing with um, one process right now um, that I just find fascinating where, uh, and, and I, hopefully a lot of you have been exposed to this in support, where you have, there's one train of thought that has a level one, level two, level three type of, um, support paradigm. Somebody calls in, goes to level one. Frequently, it's outsourced. They triage the call. All of that is based upon internal optimization. Right? We want our best engineers only to handle the hardest problems. Is this good for the customer? Raise your hand if you think this is good for the customer. Good, good. 
Absolutely not. It's horrible in our own lives. Think about it. When we have a problem, we want to call somebody and get them on the phone or we want to get them in a chat window who can solve the problem, not somebody who's going to pass me from A to B to C. Right? So in the, in the interest of this optimization, we've created something that from a customer, op, uh, uh, customer standpoint is less optimal. And I would argue vehemently that it's less, it's less efficient. It's less efficient for the, cus, for, the in, for the company themselves. It's less efficient for them. Why is that? They're passing around information. They're tossing people from A to B to C person. Right? The context is getting lost. And what I would argue is that if you have a concentrated team, actually of dedicated people focused on specific customers, the amount of throughput that you will get through that will be incredibly higher. And in fact, you'll be able to guide the customer to, to have less, to generate less tickets. You'll, you'll be able to guide them and tell them other channels that they can use to get their questions answered, because they always don't want to be opening up a support ticket. So be very, very, very mindful in the interest of optimization, frequently the opposite happens. So, if customer success is a mindset, we think about that, so it's really about the company, right, and having the company focus on customers properly, and if we set up the right metrics and we get the processes set up, so, so what in the heck is customer success? Well, I've said this, it's not voice of the customer, and it's not a customer advocate. If this is how we describe ourselves, what it means is our company isn't listening. Right? We're not listening at all. So if we do set this up the way I suggested then, um, we do have a huge gap, and it's, it's uh, how do we know the state of the customer then? So let's say we have the perfect organization and everybody's focused on the customer and all the processes are super efficient and focused on customers, and so the customers are super happy with what they're doing. We don't know where they are, right? We don't know where they are. And how do we do that? Well, we just covered off on this early, data. Absolutely data, and I think that's a lot of the reasons we are all here, has to do with the fact that this function now is becoming very, very, very data-driven. In fact, I think it is the core of what the organization needs out of a customer success function. The other thing about data is data scales. Obviously, data scales, people walking halls do not. And walking halls can be virtually walking halls, not physically walking halls. And again, when you're a small company, you must walk the halls. You must know exactly what's going on in that customer because you cannot afford not to know. You can't afford not to know. But as you scale, you will not be able to afford the kind of metrics it takes to say, I'm going to have one customer success person for X. As you scale and scale, that will not work. And in today's market, if anybody's been watching the stock market and what's been happening to public companies, who aren't profitable, right? they aren't doing so well, right? including Apogee. Right? We aren't doing so well. We spend a lot more money than we take in. And so anything that has this type of metric associated with it, we need X number of people for X number of customers, I think in the future is going to be very, very hard to, for us to, uh, to justify. The other thing, data does not leave a company. Employees do. Tell you the one thing, we, we are not great at this, so let me be clear, we're not great at this, but I tell you the one thing that frustrates me as a company and a person more than anything, when a new person comes along, they join the company and they say, who do I talk to? Who do I talk to to find out what's going on with customer X? And I just want to, I literally want to blow my brains out. Partially because I've been there for four years, and so I kind of know what's going on in most of the customers, so the question tends to come to me. But if fortunately, that's less and less, too, now. It's great to be able to say, I have no freaking idea. Uh, but how many times does that happen? And when we show up new at a company, this is what we do. Right? This, is, this is what happens. And it just it blows my mind with the amount of information we have about what's going on, what people are using, what they're not using, how quickly they're using stuff, when they went live, right? when they put their second project on the platform, how fast they actually do deployments. Right? And how many unstructured conversations do we have from executive visits to ad, I, I text, there are about a dozen of our customers who I actually text randomly. And all I do is I say, how's it going? Right? I just want to get a touch point. Where does that go? 
It goes nowhere. Well, it goes on my phone, but it doesn't go anywhere else. And we have got to solve that. We've got to solve the problem of both structured and unstructured data because people leave companies, right? It happens. All right. So now, maybe to the punchline. So what should customer success, what should we be? And I always start with, what is the outcome that we're trying to drive? And I would suggest the number one most important metric is, this is the interactive part, by the way, is, is, <laughs> close, yes. <laughs> Who said that? That was absolutely right. Yep. Uh, the number one most important metric from a, from a external perspective, if you will, from an investor is license billings. All of our future finances are dependent upon the success of license billings, period. Uh, and if we all work for license companies, I work for a license company. If everyone else does, your future is dependent upon one thing and one thing only, and that's license billings. That's it, nothing else. So that should be what we focus on. I frequently get this where people say, well, isn't our job to make customers happy? And I go, how many bills do you pay with a happy customer? Like directly, right? This is the destination, does not pay the bills. It just doesn't. And I would suggest that billings, billings as the destination, if you focus on billings, you will generate wildly, wildly, wildly satisfied customers. So what world am I living with, you're asking, living in? So we have salespeople show up and just ask for orders all day long, and that will create wildly, right? No. The trick is you have to focus on driving billings through demand, right? Through pull from the customer, right? I think that's what our job is. People buy our products because they want them. They want them, right? Out of the gate, they want them. What our job is to create an environment where they need more, they need, again, need, need, need more of it and faster, right? More of it and faster. That's what it's all about, right? That's how we create wildly, wildly satisfied customers. And they come to you and say, man, I need more of this stuff, or I want some of that, or how do I get hold of this, or I heard about this on a webinar, how do I get that, right? That's what we're trying to do. So last piece here, the key focus areas, just as some ideas in the quest for billings. Um, first of all, data as the foundation, right? I don't have data on here, but data is absolutely the foundation, and without it, none of this happens. There's no scale that happens, and there's nothing that we can impact. So the first thing is journey acceleration, journey acceleration. This is about high-impact programs focused on very, very specific stages within the journey, very specific stages that will help accelerate somebody from a three-month go-live to a two-month go-live, or a two-month before I even start a project to a two-weeks before I even start a project. We call that a mean time to go-live and a mean time to start. Very, very, very important. So there are all kinds of places you will find where you can measure impact to accelerate somebody's journey. Secondly, we still have to do this. People will stall. And I think uh, across the board, whether somebody's using a, um, a more of a consumer-driven piece of software or if it's an enterprise um, product that you're selling, people will get into these notions of, I call them stalls, right, where they aren't progressing. The key here, again, comes to data. In the old world, we would manage this by layering people across every customer to try to figure out who's stalling. We don't need to do that anymore. We know, right? The data tells us who's progressing, and who is not, right? The data will tell us. So we can be extremely focused now, extremely focused on the four or five or 10 or 12 people that we need to go impact. And the last thing is what I call data-driven expansion. Once you get, um, get access to all of this data, what you will be able to do, what you will be able to do is through analyzing usage patterns, you will be able to tell, depending on how you package your product, who needs other products of yours? Who needs it? Not selling to them again, but who needs it? And then you can create a very, very targeted, I will call it a campaign, but it can simply be a technical person calling another technical person, or one of your SCs calling a user to say, hey, I noticed this is what's happening. We have this thing, have you seen it? Would you like to try it? 
right? So use data to your advantage to figure out how to, um, to drive more product into, uh, into customers. So that's it for me. Hopefully that helped.